let's look at what goes into how investments are made into assets. When a business decides to purchase a non-current asset, that is termed as a capital investment or an expenditure. Okay, so the spending can be either to acquire the asset by purchasing it, going through the right process to become the legal owner, or constructing or manufacturing the asset from scratch. Secondly, the spending is irregular, meaning it is not often done. So you can make a purchase today and it will take them maybe six months to a year or two years before you have the need to make purchase of another. So it's not something that is done on a regular basis. And it's also done for a relatively large amount compared to the current items. So if you compare a school which is in need of a bus, once they get a bus, they might not be even planning to buy a bus within the next two years if the bus is in good shape. Unlike if they buy stationery, which is something that they will use on a regular basis. So they have to plan on shorter notices to be buying the stationery. So comparing the two, the non-current asset is irregular. Now, this non-current asset, as we explained earlier, is supposed to generate long-term benefit to the business. This benefit can be by way of interest if it is an investment. It can be dividend if the investment is in equity or the business can buy a building and expect it to go up in value so that they can offset it and realize the gains. Let's look at the purpose for asset investment decisions. The spending may be for maintenance in order to improve the capacity of an existing non current asset to serve an existing purpose. It can also be for profitability by a machinery to help in producing and a capacity that can help the business to make more returns. It can also be for expansion. When a business wants to expand its tentacles in order to cater for the opportunities that have come in. So a business that is producing 10,000 units of a product within a month, if it has need to double it, it will need to expand, maybe get a bigger machinery or a bigger space to do that. And non-current assets will serve that purpose. And lastly, it can be for indirect purposes. So a business that is into the manufacturing of drinks can invest in real estate in order to see appreciation and its value to make some returns. If capital expenditure is the spending of money in acquisition of a non-current asset, capital income is when the non-current asset is disposed of and proceeds are realized. Revenue expenditure differs from capital expenditure in that these are short-term day-to-day expenditures that are made on the operational activities of the business. We mentioned that non-current assets are one-off. They are irregular and they are long-term in nature. So any expenditure that is not capital in nature is revenue expenditure. So utilities are supposed to be done in order to see the business run and they are short-term in nature. You use it on a daily basis, weekly, so as monthly. Same for salaries, rent, fuel, etc. Okay. The benefit of revenue expenditure is supposed to be short term. You pay salaries in order to get the people to work for you daily. If you don't pay, they will not do it. It is also supposed to maintain existing non-current assets in order to maintain its earning capacity. So if you have a non-current asset and you repair it, you maintain it like vehicles, the regular maintenance and repairs in order to maintain its earning capacity or producing capacity, it is revenue expenditure. On the other hand, if you spend on the non-current asset with the intention of increasing its earning capacity, the machine is supposed to produce 20,000 units. You spend on it in order to increase it to 25,000, 30,000. That expenditure becomes capital in nature. Thirdly, revenue expenditures can be classified into selling. That is anything that helps in the sale of a business's 
product. Distribution has to do with marketing and anything that will help the business move the item to the notice of its customers. And administration expenses are any expenditure that is not directly related with production or operations. So human resource, accounting, security, all those expenditures are classified as administrative. Then revenue expenditures are period bound. You record them in the statement for the period that it was incurred. You cannot record it and move it along to the subsequent year. Non current assets are recorded in the period that are supposed to be lasting. So if they are going to last for five years, you will see them in each of the balance sheets prepared within those five years. Revenue expenditure, if it's utilities for 2021, you record the entire expenditure in 2021. It cannot go into 2022. Okay. Revenue income, on the other hand, is any benefit that a business derives from the core activity, the purpose for which the business was set up or the sale of trading assets. So a fee received by an educational institution becomes revenue because that was what they were set up to do. If they have a van that they believe is not serving their purpose or they have need for a bigger one and they sell of the van, their purpose for operation is not to sell vehicles. So that sale of vehicle will not become a revenue income. It might become other income that will still be recorded in the financial statement. Interest and dividend earned from investment are also revenue income. Let's look at how asset investment affects businesses. It does so in growth area. So capital expenditures are necessary if a business wants to grow and expand. If you want to move from producing 20,000 units per day to 50,000, you need to invest in your assets, expand the machinery that you use, expand your factory or your premises, expand the necessary tools that will help you do that in the long term. Now, because of its size, we mentioned that it is large in value. If you make a wrong capital expenditure, it will become an albatross on the business's neck because you have a huge amount that has been invested into something that is not going to generate the necessary or the requisite benefit to the entity. The impact of capital expenditure will be long term. So as we mentioned, if you make an imprudent decision in capital expenditure, you are going to bear or live with it for a very long time. So we have to be very careful. The second is risk. Because the capital investment is long term in nature, it carries a lot of uncertainties because you make certain judgments in the future based on estimates or beliefs that experts would have. It will carry along some risk. Some of the risks will be defaulting in debt. So because of the nature, a business might go for a facility to finance the asset investment. And because it is long term in nature, it is possible it will get to a period where they might not be servicing the debt as agreed. Secondly, the estimated useful life, the period for which the asset was expected to serve the business, it might not be so. It might have been estimated to serve five years, but when it set off, something might happen to it and it will be reduced to maybe two years and that will gravely affect the business. Also, there might be fluctuation in the expected returns that the business has estimated. You're expecting the assets or the machinery to produce 50,000 units from the 20 that you ex currently have. It is possible the assets might not meet that expectation. Thirdly, funding. Now, the asset investment requires huge amount. Non-current assets cost a lot compared to current ones. So it's possible for a business to require funding. Now, the funding may come from the internal coffers of the business, from funds that they have saved. It might be for other purposes or for this particular objective. It might also be external, where the firm will have to resort to debt or loans from financial institutions or call outsiders to invest in equity. 
now whatever the choice of financing a business seeks it will have its impact so if you go for equity we are calling in more people to share in the power that will also impact on the frequency or the speed with which management will make a decision you have more people wielding powers on the decisions that management is supposed to have if you go for debt the business will be highly geared meaning you have increased the risky nature of the business if you use your internally generated funds it means that when you have an opportunity in the short term your ability to respond will be curtailed okay so we have to weigh all this in order to make the right decision it also carries complexity with it because the investments are based on future estimates and variables this estimate may change due to certain events in the future so you plan that this asset or the business investment that you're making is going to generate returns in a stable environment in two years time the situation might change the economy will not be that reasonable as you expected or will not be that booming there might be some political turmoil social instability technological advancements might come that will render the machine not capable of giving you the return that you demand environmental factors such as maybe some pollution metrics that might cause your business to restructure and legal factors and all that so you plan now in the future things might change and will render your plans null or incapable